but we'll start with the uh, well, more dual citizenships. Uh, so obviously it's Barnaby Joyce this week to be revealed to be a New Zealand citizen by descent. And that, that's because his father uh, was born a British subject in New Zealand because Australia uh, and New Zealand didn't have citizenship before they passed laws in 1948. So everyone born in Australia and New Zealand was uh, a British subject. But the way the New Zealand uh, law was uh, drawn up, uh, it means that Barnaby Joyce uh, unwittingly is a New Zealand citizen by descent and it's been confirmed by the New Zealand Interior Energy Ministry. So on the on the face of it, he appears to be uh, ineligible under Section 44 to be in Parliament, but it's it's taken the Section 44 debate uh, into 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 a whole new field that is the High Court interpreting it too strictly. Well, there's a whole lot of variables that can happen here. Um, I'm unsure of the composition of the High Court, but if we've got more conservative judges, um, then people like Canavan, Roberts um, and Joyce could all be in a considerable amount of trouble. There, there's, there's quite a few parallels between the Roberts case and the Joyce case as well, because they were both considered um, British subjects, as you will, and then they, they well, Joyce was born here in Australia, but um, uh, Roberts wasn't. He was born to uh, believe in an Australian mother and a Welsh father. But um, it's getting very, very tenuous here. It almost looks like half the, um, the Senate and the House could be pulled up with this because we, we are in a very multicultural society. So um, it is rather interesting. I was really shocked to hear the, the news of Joyce, so I thought it would be more likely that Tony Abbott would become Prime Minister again than hearing that Barnaby Joyce is a Kiwi. Now, um, Paul Murray said that he's the most Aussie man he's ever seen. He's got a flag post at his home. He walks by it every day. He loves his nation. Um, and I'm certain that uh, if he had to stand down, he would recontest his seat in New England and win comprehensively. Yeah, um, that... I've heard this from, uh, yeah, uh, from a Nationals insider. Yeah, and certainly the the internet's had a lot of fun with uh, Barnaby Joyce, New Zealand uh, uh, memes. It's uh, with uh, because uh, the new, if there was a by election in New England, uh, of course, uh, Tony Windsor has said that he'll put his hand up now. Barnaby Joyce he easily fought off Tony Windsor last federal election, but of course you still you still never know that the government would go through uh, a peer a period of quite. Uh, are anxious, worrying whether they'd hang on to their uh, majority, which is which is probably why they've um, been uh, been so strident this week in uh, in, in having Joyce uh, remain as deputy prime minister and saying they're they're quite confident that that he will remain in parliament. Yeah, the thing with uh, the high court is, uh, as I said, they they've interpreted this section quite strictly that even if you're you know, un unaware of your your citizenship, they they go by the principle ignorance is, is no excuse. And it was interesting the article that I wrote this week uh, uh, about uh, Section Forty Four. This uh, most people still think that it's it's an appropriate uh, uh, section to have, and they uh, and they don't take kindly to like MPs from either side. You know, not bothering to check whether they're uh, citizens of another country or not. Well, the interesting thing here is that um, the, the Turnbull government could be forced into a minority government. Uh, now, this is a big problem, especially with the news that Bob Cutter says that he may not support the coalition, uh, which shows that, um, that they, they could be in dire straits. Although, I, I, I hear that there are um, definitely some independents in the House that may, may form a minority, uh, help form a minority government, uh, much like... Um, what, what um, Theresa May had to do, but still it shows that um, uh, Turnbull's house, if you will, is a house of cards and, and not really um, built on solid foundation. And it, it's worrying to see the uh, coalition government in, in such dire straits. Well, that's probably why uh, the government and Julie Bishop in particular became quite uh, unhinged, in my opinion, the fact that they uh, tried to turn it on the Labor Party and accuse them of conspiring with the New Zealand Labor Party, or that, or as they 
uh, were keen to point out a foreign uh, political party to, as they saw it, bring down the Australian government because uh, and a staffer in Penny Wong's office got a New Zealand Labor backbencher to ask a question about uh, New Zealand citizenship by descent to the uh, Interior Minister of New Zealand, uh, Peter Dunn. And so apparently this was the, the smoking gun that uh, the Labor Party was uh, enga engaged in treason and a conspiracy. And so they have basically turned what's a domestic embarrassment for them into a, an international incident because uh, uh, they've the Labor Party over there have had to say that, you know, oh, we probably shouldn't have asked that question, and Bill English saying, oh, you know, I don't, uh, uh, I don't, I don't think this will affect the relationship, because Julie Bishop, she actually said she, if, because New Zealand's about to go into elections, she would find it hard to work with a uh, Labor New Zealand government, given that they have done this, which is... It's, it's she, she, She's totally out of line. Yeah, she's accusing uh, New Zealand Labor of interfering with Australia, but she's actually tried to influence New Zealand politics with that. And her job um, as foreign minister is to is to liaise and and not to to directly influence uh, for, you know other other countries' domestic policy, but it's to liaise and to make sure that we've got good international relations. Now I, I can't imagine that if New Zealand Labor gets elected. Julie Bishop's made these comments. Um, I think that we could be on some rocky ground, uh, and I and I don't think that it was very wise of, of Julie to make those comments. And um, and it just shows. Um, well, it simply just shows that she um, may be. How do I say? Thinking she's bigger than she is, thinking she's more important than she is, not knowing when to keep her mouth closed, and maybe that's because of some weak leadership from Malcolm Turnbull, uh, not keeping his cabinet in line, and, and I think that's just that's just showing through there. Uh, it's a it's a sign of desperation in, in in my opinion the fact they wanted to deflect from the fact that they've now got two uh, senior government ministers before the High Court under uh, Section Forty Four and yeah Julie Bishop she was you know rightly you know ridiculed by the Labor Party in Parliament I mean they have, they have, whenever. There, there was a, a question from the backbench ask, asking about, you know, this alleged conspiracy. Like the Labor Party just burst into laughter, and there was an actually quite a a, a good uh, speech by uh, Penny Wong, or should I say, <laughs> a good speech by her for once. Complimenting um, Penny Wong, Tim. Oh well, I'm just saying she she was right in uh, in this uh, point of view, and uh, it was actually Andrew Bolt who drew my attention to this Penny Wong speech, where she said, "Oh yes, we've got to be worried about the the Kiwis under the bed," and correctly pointed out, oh, uh, "Don't forget that the NZ in ANZAC stands for uh, New Zealand." So you know we're supposed to be mm -hmm. you know scared about you know f uh, foreign influence from New Zealand. I mean, yeah, if. Like, no conservative commentator has, you know, f uh, followed the government line on this. So they're, they're clearly out on their own. Well, um, I, I really don't know what to say. But for me to, um, to, to acknowledge um, that the Labor Party is right is a very hard thing for me to do. But I have to, in this instance, uh, Julie Bishop has no place uh, to get involved in another country's domestic issues, and as well, um, you can just just see it's complete and utter turmoil in Canberra. Uh, Canavan, now Joyce, uh, who's next? Okay, it's it's just uh, getting uh, ridiculous. Um, I can, if it gets any worse, we'll definitely have another election. Uh, the government's in a state of chaos; they can't govern. Um, they're not really getting any big legislative achievements done either um, and we're not seeing this progress uh, that Turnbull was was promised when he when he came in Abbott 30 news polls whatever now Turnbull's had 17 lost news uh, polls his cabinet's falling it's just going into disarray uh, the man really needs to have a look in the mirror and um, assess where he's at otherwise I'm afraid Phil Shorten will be the next Prime Minister of Australia and God help us if he is. 
Well, actually, the, the main legislative item this week was um, uh, negotiating media reform through the Senate, but that's, of course, just been like, uh, all this uh, citizenship talk and, of course, the, the Hanson st stunt today. I mean, it's been pushed to, to the, the bottom of the, the news feed. Uh, so, yeah, they're... Uh, all, all of the, the oxygen's being sucked up by this uh, dual citizenship issue, and uh, Malcolm Turnbull tried to um, uh, ch uh, get Bill Shorten to agree to a full audit of uh, MP citizenship this week, which uh, Bill Shorten refused because he's quite confident that uh, Labor's internal processes are much better than the uh, the, the, the coalition's. Um, and there, there is widely speculated that there are more dual citizens in Parliament who know it, and this is why Cory Bernardi is calling today for uh, Parliament to be suspended until we like sort out who is actually eligible to be in the place. Yeah, well, who really knows what Cory's motives are for saying that? Is it to get a big chunky headline to, um, to push his party? Or is it a sincere belief? I find it hard to decipher between those two. But to, to have the prospect of having potentially a quarter of our elected officials being ineligible is a very scary um, prospect. And I, I do think that Corey, in that sense, um, does have some validity to what he's saying. Uh, but but his motives are what I'm unsure of. But it does make sense. Uh, there are definitely things that we need to be focusing on. We're getting caught up in quagmires like the citizenship debacle, same-sex marriage. These are all really non-issues um, uh, with, an, with a, a stagnating economy and what have you. Um, and we, we really just need to, to push for... Um, smaller governments, lower taxes, and basic um, smaller liberal principles, and um, the government's failing to do that. Uh, well, it is the, the the law. I mean, it's in the constitution that you can't be a dual citizen and, and sit in parliament. So the reason why the, this issue is so prominent now is because uh, our politicians have been so sloppy that you know, they haven't even bothered to check they're complying with the, the constitution. So yeah, it's the, the politici politicians' own fault for you know not not following the law. And the question is. Who, whose fault is it? Is it the party having poor internal processes or is it the candidates themselves um, not making sure that they are in fact eligible to be selected, uh, well nominated at, at the party level?